everybody, my name is Megan Vischio and welcome to my class, How to Create Your Own Fairy Home. This is through the Voorheesville Public Library with their summer reading program. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm a fine artist and I love anything miniature. I love nature and I love foraging in nature for objects to use in art. I love animals and rocks. So when I was asked to do this program, I was so excited and I began collecting things immediately outside and in my house to put together this program for you. So I'm so glad you're here. So when I think about fairies, I think about a mix between the borrowers and nature foragers. And if you've never heard of the borrowers, it's a book series. And I remember it from being a kid. It was a miniature family who lived in a big house in, I think in the wall or in the floorboards. And they would make their house from things they found in the big house. So like uh, their bed might be a matchbox or a thimble could be a garbage can or a empty thread spool would be a table. And as a kid, I just wanted to shrink down and get into those little spaces and see what it'd be like to live there. And I still love miniatures to this day and I still make them. So my, that was my thought about borrower or the fairies. They're kind of a mix between the borrowers and nature foragers. So when I built my fairy home, that's kind of what I was thinking about. But I invite you to think about what your story is going to be before you build your fairy home. Um, are they going to be eclectic fairies? And there's maybe a lot of stuff in the yard and inventions and neat little gadgets. Uh, does your fairy home have a spooky feel? Is it haunted and is it a little run down? Is it neat and tidy? Maybe the grass is all one level and the house is very neat and everything's in order. Or... Maybe it's an abandoned fairy home and there's a little for sale sign and there's cobwebs. Or uh, do they have a lot of kids? Do they have a lot of pets? What are their pets? So take a little time to think what your story is. So before you begin, you just want to get all your work tools together. And here's just some ideas of things you might need. A work surface, like an old paper bag or some newspaper. It gets pretty dirty, so you just want to put that down on your work surface. A glue gun is optional. It helps for some things because it grabs really quick and it's pretty strong, but only use with adult supervision. A rag for cleaning up messes. A popsicle stick is always handy. Some glue. I really like Aileen's Tacky Glue because it grabs really quick, but anything you have at home would be okay. A pair of scissors, a paintbrush if you choose to paint anything, a pencil, and most importantly, your imagination. Okay, here's just a look at some of the things I put in your goodie bags. The cardboard tube that will be the fairy home was just a piece of cardboard tubing that I cut into sections and then drilled holes for a little window. And the roof is just a plastic shell type thing that will protect the cardboard tube. If you put your fairy home outside, it's plastic and it'll protect it from the rain. And then that plastic plant tray is something you can get also at the dollar store. Okay, so now it's time to go nature foraging and um, you can do this in your own backyard or if you want to get your family and go for a hike, Thatcher Park has a lot of great items that are any everywhere. The bike trail, um, so just some places. So think like a fairy and go out and forage. Just some things you can find. Um, sod, I got this in my own backyard. I just shoveled a small circle of the grass and with a shovel just lightly pried up that first few layers of grass, the roots, and the, and, the, and the soil below. And just a small piece is all you need. That's sod. Moss is great because even because it dies, it's still green, so great in a fairy home. It also kind of looks like miniature grass, so um, you can find uh, moss usually in a dark and wet place in the forest, and there's tons of it. Only take what you need. Birch bark is also really cool for fairy homes. Um, you can always find a fallen birch tree in the woods. I guarantee if you go on a hike or even in your backyard, you'll always find a fallen birch tree. So please only take from trees that have fallen because if you go taking the bark from a living tree, it's gonna hurt the tree. Stones and rocks are good. You can find them in your backyard really anywhere. Shells, maybe you have a collection of shells at home. Those are great for fairy homes. Driftwood, what about driftwood? Or um, some grass or flower seeds, maybe you just put down dirt and then you sprinkle seeds on and you grow your own grass and your own flowers. And then you might need some dirt to fill in the spaces. 
Okay, so here's just a quick little tutorial of how I assembled um, my fairy home and what I did. And there's no real science to this. Just use your imagination and um, have fun with it and, and just decide what you want to do. And you are not limited to what you have in your goodie bag. If you find other things at home you'd like to use, go ahead and use them. You do not have to use what was given to you. It was just a kind of some things that might be fun and then you know you go from there. So first things uh, we're going to do is we're going to take our plastic tray if you're going to choose to use this. Um, if you're not, again, you can go right out into nature and build on a stump maybe or in a tree uh, nook where it's been hollowed out. You can build right in there your fairy home. You don't have to use this. The nice thing about the tray dish is that it makes it a little more portable. So you can take this out into nature and put it where you'd like it. So the first thing we're going to do is just, um, we're going to take some rocks. This is just some gravel I had at home. And um, you're just going to want to put a couple handfuls of gravel or rocks right in the bottom of your tray. And what this is going to do is just help with drainage. So if you're putting living plants inside your dish, you're going to want drainage so the roots aren't sitting in water. And it's also going to give your tray some weight. So if you do choose to put it out in nature, it won't fly away. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my rocks in. That's probably good, just enough to fill the bottom. And then, like I was mentioning, this is sod from my backyard. I just dug it up and I found this kind of cool, mossy type, different type of grass. I don't know what it is, but I thought it was cool and I liked how there was little tufts of grass in there. It gave it a little bit of unique flair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those pieces of sod wherever I want them. If you need to kind of break it up, it breaks up really easily. And then you just fit it to your dish. So maybe I'll put some over here. And that's okay that you're breaking it up. That's perfectly fine. Now I've got a little space right here. So again, I just take some dirt that I have from outside and I can put it right in there. And if you um, want to put some stones under where your fairy house will be, that might be a good idea because then it'll prevent the water from soaking up into your cardboard. Or if you have a big flat stone, you could always lay a big flat stone right there and then put your fairy ho home on top of it. The, you know, the less contact this, that cardboard tube has with water, the better. Um, then it won't absorb the water. So anyway, so I've got just my base here. It's nice and heavy. And now I can go and assemble my fairy home. So again, you would, in your kit, if you got the kit, you might have gotten two different types of tops. One's kind of more flat plastic dish and one, oh, there's a little bug from my, my sod. <laughs> I'll just let him go. Or there's this, um, this type of like coconut roof. And again, I went with plastic. So if you're putting this outside and you're putting it on that cardboard tube, it's going to protect your cardboard tube from soaking in water because cardboard is not waterproof. So if it's in a wet environment, it will absorb that water. So you have those two types of tops um, and you have your cardboard tube. So building your fairy home, I kind of cut little windows in there. You can use that as a window if you wanted to use it as a door, you could. And what I did with mine is just covered this whole thing in a little bit of moss and a little bit of bark, the birch bark. And then it was actually moss I had here. It wasn't from nature. I think it was from a train set, not a train set. It was from uh, making miniatures like train sets, a moss. Anyways, I covered my tube in that and I just outlined my window and my door with a little bit of stones. You want to make yourself a little door for your fairy home. And you can, I just use cardboard and I'll grab I will show you that after. I just used cardboard and I cut it out and painted it brown. That was my door. You could use popsicle sticks. Um, you could even cut out a little door shape out of bark. That could be your door, but you want to have a little door for your fairy home and just cover the whole thing in whatever type of material you're going to use. When I did the roof on mine, as you'll see, all I did was I took one of these pine cones and you guys will get these in your kit. And I just, you might be able to do it with your fingers. I just plucked off all of these scales. Now this one's coming off easy just by hand. That's good. Some of them are a little tougher and you might have to cut them off. I plucked off all those 
scales and I just took my roof and I went around one by one starting at the bottom and I used hot glue for this just because I wanted it to grab quickly and I just glued those pine cone scales one ring around then the next ring around and then the next and then I just finished at the top and you'll see that later in this video you'll see what I did so that's the way you can cover it you can also cover it with stones you can cover it with moss Again, this is your imagination. This is your fairy home, so build it any way you'd like. Um, an idea I thought when I, when I had this kind of little bit shallower coconut shell roof, I thought, huh, it kind of looks like a mushroom. So I just painted it red, added a little white spots, painted that cardboard tube red, uh, white, and then it kind of looks like a little mushroom home. So that's just a, another idea. Maybe your fairy lives in a little mushroom. So now once, You've got your base all set, you've got your stones in there, you've got your sod or your dirt or your rocks, whatever you're gonna add to here, and you've put your fairy home on, then you're just gonna landscape the rest of it. And this is the really fun part, I love this part too. Um, I'm gonna move that out of there to get out of the way. This is where you can add little stones around. That'd be kind of cute to have little stones. You can make a path. And I thought this would be really cute. What if you took one of your stones? I'm gonna take this one. And this is just a piece of chalk. You can draw little, oh, that's really hard on this little piece of rock. You can draw little flowers. You can draw little designs on your rocks. Or little hearts or smiley faces. I just thought that would be kind of a neat idea. Or you can leave them blank or you can flip them. Um, and then you got some of these mushrooms. These are just foam little decorative mushrooms. What's really cool about these is they just, they just go right in. You might need to bend that car, that tube over. They just go right in to your sod, push them right in. And then they're nice and sturdy there. And here's some other ideas I wanted to show you. This was the little bed. I had, um, I used that milkweed pod, and all I did, I'm just gonna get that out of the way. See, I told you it gets messy, so you're gonna wanna either work outside or have a, a work paper down. So all I did was took a cotton ball from my house, and I wanted to tear it apart, just to make it look more authentic and less like a cotton ball. And I just stuck it right in that pod, and then you can use a little, blanket and I don't know pom-pom pillow or no pillow but there's a little bed really easy one thing about fabric I want to show you so everybody has these nice neat squares but I don't know I don't think they look very authentic so I just want to teach you if you want to make your fabric look a little more weathered or that it was kind of found by a fairy and used maybe they you had an old shirt and you didn't need it anymore so it was, I don't know, given away or recycled or you cut it up into rags and the fairy found a little part of that shirt and was like, oh, we can use that in our houses. So what I like to do when in my house when I made my fairy home is I just took the fabric, <clears throat> this is not fraying too easily, and I just pulled at it and made it look a little less perfect because I didn't want my fairy house to be too neat and tidy. I wanted it to have a little bit of character. So... You can just pull it, and if actually that just kind of made something cool. You can just pull it. If you stretch it, it kind of does something neat. That makes it a little, look a little more authentic. Also with the fabric, if you want to cut it into shapes, maybe I made a bunting flag on mine, so you could cut it into sort of like little triangle shapes, or maybe you want to make a pair of fun little fairy pants. I love this fabric. I think I put a piece in everybody's goodie bag because, well, first of all, it came from one of my favorite people, my sister-in-law, Charlotte. She gave me this fabric that she had found at a, an estate sale and I just thought it was the coolest fabric. So I just love it and I use it in a lot of things. And so that's one of my reasons it's my favorite, but then it's just such, it's just such neat fabric. So you can make little fairy clothes. Maybe you have a clothesline and you know, you clip up the clothes. So yeah, their fairies are hanging out their, their pajamas on the clothesline to dry. 
that's just another idea that you can use. Walnut shells are really cute. And I just wanted to show you, these are two little um, pieces I made. And this is a bunny in a nut and a fox in a nut. And you can actually see these both on my blog and how I made them. This is actually not a real walnut. It's a casting of a real walnut. I made a cast out of mold, uh, latex mold, and um, put clay in it. So this is actually made out of polymer clay. That's not a real nut. And then I just made a cute little bunny with a blanket sleeping inside and a cute little fox. So yeah, that you could have a little walnut shell bed or a little sink made out of that. Here's that cat's eye I was telling you about, the acorn top. If you kind of put a cat's eye in there, it almost looks like, if you can see that, it just looks like water in a little bowl. That might be something cute you wanna add. Oh, one thing about my fairy home, and I'll mention this again, I just kept the top separate because I wanted to add fairy lights. And this is not included in your kit, but something you can easily find, a little battery operated tea light candle or battery operated fairy lights. You can find them really anywhere. And I put them in my fairy home because I wanted it to be just lit, lit up. And it looks really cute and cozy at night when the, when the fairy lights are on and the lights are out. If you'd like to glue it down, it might be a little more secure. You can definitely do that. And of course you can always lift it up the whole fairy home and put your lights right in that way. Just remember if you're gonna put some sort of fairy light in there that it is battery powered and not a flame. Here's just a quick little tour of the fairy home that I made. You can see the little milkweed bed, the bee bath, the bird bath. There's the lights inside. I folded the wings of the butterfly up a little bit so it looked more realistic. There's a little flag bunting. And just a reminder, if you are using living plants, your fairy garden is gonna need a drink and a little bit of sunshine. Okay, so there you have it, how to build your own fairy home. I hope this video inspires you. I hope that you learn something and that you can get outside and be in nature with your family and then come home and build something really wonderful. And if you'd like to share what your fairy home looks like, just take a photo when you're done and send it to Mrs. Brown at the library and she'll put together a virtual um, online art show of all the fairy homes. So if you'd like to participate in that, I really encourage you to. That way we all get to see what everybody else did kind of with the same supplies, which will be really interesting. That's what I love when I teach an art class. Everybody pretty much gets the same supplies and then the things that come out are all unique and all different and I just love to see how each piece of art is unique to that person. So I really encourage you to send in your photos of your finished fairy home to Mrs. Brown at the library. If you'd like to see more of my work, I do have a blog that I post on regularly. There, It's family friendly so anybody can take a look and I'm just gonna do a little Jimmy Fallon type. It's called the studio house.blog. So I'd love if you'd take a look, take some time to take a look. And if you'd like to follow it, that'd be awesome too. So thank you for stopping by and put on your fairy hats and go out and forage and enjoy making art. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Mrs. Brown from the Voorheesville Public Library. Wasn't that a wonderful instructional video that Megan Vicio did for the fairy gardens and fairy homes? How exciting! I know that you are going to use your imaginations and creativity to create some fabulous fairy gardens or fairy homes. And remember to snap a photo and send that photo to me through my email at gail.brown at v-o-o-r-p-l dot org. I will take all of those pictures and create a virtual showcase of your creativity. Mrs. Vicio said that she got involved with being excited about miniatures and art when she read this book. 
the borrowers. She also said that she really liked to go outdoors and spend time in nature and think about all the wonderful natural elements that maybe fairies use or fairies might borrow to create their homes. So I thought I would read a chapter from The bar Borrowers. And the borrowers live underneath a kitchen floor. And in their home, just like Mrs. Vicio said, they, they borrow items from the people who live upstairs. Maybe they have a matchbox that serves as a dresser for their things or a bed. And the chapter I am going to read to you today is when one of the fairies ventures outdoors into the grassy lands and encounters a big person. It was an eye, or it looked like an eye, clear and bright like the color of the sky. An eye like her own, but enormous, a glaring eye. Breathless with fear, she sat up, and the eye blinked. A great fringe of lashes came curving down and flew up again out of sight. Cautiously, Arietti moved her legs. She's the small person, the borrower. She would slide noiselessly in among the grass stems and slither away down the bank. Don't move, said a voice. And the voice, like the eye, was enormous but somehow hushed and hoarse like a surge of wind through the grating on a stormy night in March. Arity froze. Oh, so this is it, she thought, the worst and most terrible thing of all. I have been seen. Whatever happened to Agaglatina will now almost certainly happen to me. There was a pause, and Arity, her heart pounding in her ears, heard the breath again, drawn swiftly into the vast lungs. Or, said the voice, whispering still, I shall hit you with my ash stick. Suddenly, Arietti became calm. Why? she asked. How strange her voice sounded. Crystal thin and harebell clear, it tinkled on the air. In case came the surprise whisper at last. You ran toward me quickly through the grass in case. It went on trembling a little. You came and scrabbled at me with your nasty little hands. Arity stared at the eye. She held herself quite still. Why? she asked again. And again the word tinkled. Icy cold it sounded this time. And needle sharp. Things do, said the voice. I've seen them in India. Arity thought of her gazetteer of the world. You're not in India now, she pointed out. Did you come out of the house? Yes, said Arity. From whereabouts in the house? Arity stared at the eye. I'm not going to tell you, she said at last bravely. Then I'll hit you with my ash stick. All right, said Arity. Hit me. I'll pick you up and break you in half. Arity stood up. All right, she said, and took two paces forward. There was a sharp gasp and an earthquake in the grass. He spun around from her and sat up, a great mountain in a green jersey. He had fair, straight hair and golden eyelashes. Stay where you are, he cried. Arity stared up at him. This was the boy. Breathless, she felt, and light with fear. I guessed you were about nine, she gasped after a moment. He flushed. Well, you're wrong. I'm ten. He looked down at her, breathing deeply. How old are you? Fourteen, said Arity. Next June, she added, watching him. There was silence while Arity waited, 
trembling a little. Can you read? The boy said at last. Of course, said Arity. Can't you? Uh, no, he stammered. I, I mean, yes. I mean, I I've just come from India. What's that got to do with it? Asked Arity. Well, if you're born in India, you're bilingual. And if you're bilingual, you can't read, not so well. Arity stared up at him. Hmm, what a monster, she thought, dark against the sky. Do you grow out of it? She asked. He moved a little and she felt the cold flick of his shadow. Oh, yes, he said. It wears off. My sisters were bilingual. Now they aren't a bit. They could read any of those books upstairs in the schoolroom. So could I, said Arity quickly. If someone could hold them and turn the pages, I'm not a bit bilingual. I, I can read anything. Could you read out loud? Of course, said Arity. Would you wait here while I run upstairs and get a book now? Well, said Arity, she was longing to show off. Then a startled look came into her eyes. Oh, she faltered. What's the matter? The boy was standing up now. He towered above her. How many doors are there to this house? She squinted up at him against the bright sunlight. He dropped on one knee. Doors, he said. Outside doors? Yes. Well, there's the front door, the back door, the gun room door, the kitchen door, the scullery door, and the French windows in the drawing room. Well, you see, said Arity, my father's in the hall by the front door, working. He, um, he wouldn't want to be disturbed. Working, said the boy. What at? Getting material, said Arity, for a scrubbing brush. Then I'll go in the side door. He began to move away, but turned suddenly and came back to her. He stood a moment as though embarrassed, and then he said, Can you fly? No, said Arity, surprised. Can you? His face became even redder. Of course not, he said angrily. I'm not a fairy. Well, nor am I, said Arity. Nor is anybody. I don't believe in them. He looked at her strangely. You don't believe in them? No, said Arity. Do you? Of course not. Really, she thought he is a very angry kind of boy. My mother believes in them she said, trying to appease him. She thinks she saw one once. It was when she was a girl and lived with her parents behind the sand pile in the potting shed. He squatted down on his heels and she felt his breath on her face. What was it like? He asked. About the size of a glowworm, with wings like a butterfly, and it had a tiny little face, she said. All alight and moving like sparks and tiny moving hands. Its face was changing all the time, she said, smiling and sort of shimmering. It seemed to be talking, she said, very quickly, but you couldn't hear a word. Oh, said the boy interested. After a moment, he asked, where did it go? It just went, said Arity. When my mother saw it, it seemed to be caught in a cobweb. It was dark at the time, about five o'clock on a winter's evening, after tea. Oh, he said again, and picked up two petals of cherry blossom, which he folded together like a sandwich and ate slowly. Supposing, he said, staring past her at the wall of the house, you saw a little man, about as tall as a pencil, with a blue patch in his trousers, halfway up a window curtain, carrying a doll's teacup. Would you say it's a fairy? No, said Arity. I say it was my father. Oh, said the boy, thinking this out. Does your father have a blue patch on his trousers? Not on his best trousers. He does on his borrowing ones. Oh said the boy again. 
he seemed to find it a safe sound as lawyers do. Are there many people like you? No, said Arity. None. We're all different. I mean as small as you. Arity laughed. Oh, don't be silly, she said. Surely you don't think there are many people in the world your size. There are more my size than yours, he retorted. Honestly, began Arity, helplessly, and laughed again. Do you really think, I mean, whatever sort of a world would it be? Those great chairs, I've seen them. Fancy if you had to make chairs that size for everyone. And the stuff for their clothes, miles and miles of it. Tents of it, and the sewing, and their great houses reaching up so you can hardly see the ceilings. Their great beds, the they eat great smoking mountains of it, huge bogs of stew and soup and stuff. Don't you eat soup? asked the boy. Of course we do, laughed Arity. My father had an uncle who had a little boat, which he rowed round in the stock pot, picking up flotsam and jetsam. He did bottom fishing too, for bits of marrow until the cook got suspicious through finding bent pins in the soup. Once he was nearly shipwrecked on a chunk of submerged shin bone. He lost his oars and the boat sprang a leak, but he flung a line over the pot handle and pulled himself alongside the rim. But all that stock, fathoms of it, and the size of a stock pot. I mean, there wouldn't be enough stuff in the world to go around after a bit. That's why my father says it's a good thing they're dying out. Just a few, my father says. That's all we need to keep us. Otherwise, he says, the whole thing gets... Arity hesitating, trying to remember the word. The whole thing gets exaggerated, he says. What do you mean, asked the boy, to keep us? So, if you want to learn more about the borrowers, you could check out this book from the library. And once again, this is how Megan Vischio first got her inspiration for loving things that are small. Enjoy your time creating your fairy gardens and your fairy homes. And don't forget, send me a picture of your magical creation. Have a wonderful day.